Hello, and welcome to another edition of What's Moving in the Forex Market, brought to you by myself, Kurt Capra, and Pristine Trading. As always, please keep in mind that all comments are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. And as always, make sure to check out our upcoming free webinar schedule for this week. We've got a great list of webinars on tap, understanding chart patterns and your, your own psychology today, Monday, June 8th at 415, as well as a free webinar by myself on Wednesday, June 10th at 415. If you want to learn more about how we at Pristine look at the Forex market and, and the patterns involved in how we go about trading the Forex market. And for a full schedule, make sure to check www.pristine.com. All right, taking a look in the upper left, we have Euro US dollar. And as we can see, we had a very powerful move up last week, <clears throat> which we were expecting may happen based on the weekly chart. If you look back to our previous videos, you'll see how we were discussing that the weekly chart was pulling back into an area where a higher low was possible to form. And sure enough, that is in fact what happened. As we go to the weekly chart here, you can see double bottom move up, pull back into about the 50% retracement area, resulted in a pop back up. But the trend is, is at this point more neutral. However, it is still weak overall on this weekly time frame, but trying to turn around. So the daily chart, as you can see here once again, is somewhat conflicted and neutral. This move down was certainly bearish, but this move back up has given new hope to the longs, to the bulls. So we'll see what happens. In any case, the Euro US dollar pair here really is not set up for any great multi day follow through because the trend is neutral. So we're going to want to just go with the flow of, of movement on any one given day, follow the, following the momentum. Moving on over to Aussie US dollar, it had experienced a very nice fluid move down into support and this is where we were expecting somewhere in this area for buyers to begin stepping up and sure enough they did, but all, all that we saw happen was a strong move up into some minor resistance and price fell back down to retest this low. So as you can see, we're starting here this week with some uh, some bullishness after retesting that low. And we'll see where we go from here. Overall, it is weak, uh, but we are on support. Looking at the weekly time frame, this is an area that's held in the past. Will it hold this time? Well, Time will tell. We'll have to see. It is behaving rather weak at the moment, but we'll just have to continue to follow bar by bar and see what happens. At this point, again, it's trying to hold, but we'll see We'll see if it can really get any kind of significant push up. If not, then a deeper fall into and possibly through support becomes a very real, if not likely, scenario. New Zealand dollar, US dollar in the upper right continues its slide, continues to fall, and uh, as we discussed last week, has already broken support, so can really continue to move lower. So this is a pair that we want to remain bearish on overall, but in the short term, it is trying to bounce a little bit. So nothing really changes here. Overall, bias is bearish. But as you can see, it is trying to get a little bit of a push up here at the moment. So we'll see how this goes. But definitely, uh, as I said, a more bearish bias unless this pivot high is taken out. If this pivot high gets taken out, then we can begin to shift that bias and, and start looking at, at this pair in a more bullish perspective. Moving down to the bottom right. We have the US dollar yen, and as we discussed last week, once again, this pair has experienced a very nice, strong move higher. It was consolidating for part of last week. We got the push up as expected, and this pair continues to remain strong. Now, looking at the weekly, we might be well served getting some kind of consolidation this week you know let letting it rest in this area maybe even even the next two weeks that wouldn't be a bad thing for an much larger 
push to the upside. So, you know, a little bit of rest here wouldn't be terrible. It would actually be productive to the longer term picture here. So we may be in for a bit of choppy action here on this pair, but we'll have to see. The momentum is certainly to the long side. And if that momentum continues, then we want to go with it. But uh, bigger picture, like I said, it, it is better to see this consolidate chop around in this area a bit and and then we can get a more sustained move higher so we'll just have to play the momentum and see how it uh, develops over the course of this coming week because the demand is certainly um, in place here the, the the longs the bulls certainly have control and we need to respect that Moving on over here to our middle bottom chart, U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. It's just been consolidating here on the uh, on the daily after a very strong move up. But it is into resistance. You can see here on the weekly chart, it's at this inflection point where either it's going to form a lower high on the weekly chart and fall all the way back down to these previous lows, or it's going to be a failed attempt to move lower where it then begins to move back up towards the top of this range so time will tell here we'll, we'll really have to see I mean if it breaks lower we're definitely going to want to go with that weakness and see what can happen not from a longer term perspective but from a shorter term you know day-to-day -day perspective we definitely want to follow that weakness should it come in because the larger time frame certainly suggests that additional weakness down to this prior low is possible on the flip side, if it does begin to move up above these highs, then we also want to look to play that long because we do have room to move back up and a failed lower high would be enough to likely get this pair moving up there. So really this could go either way, but ultimately you got to wait for the break one way or the other to see the, the truth, so to speak. And finally, moving on over to the bottom left, we've got pound US dollar. This pair was largely sideways last week as it continues to sit on this support trying to figure out what exactly it's going to want to do here. So again, this is another scenario where time will tell. Looking at the weekly chart, it is trying to form a higher low, which really wouldn't be a terrible thing and, and wouldn't be out of line with what the previous pattern suggesting. We were talking last week how this strong move up took out some resistance. So a pullback and higher low in this area is actually something that we might we might want to expect and look for to result in a nice move higher. So that continues to develop here and, and we're just going to have to wait and see if we break this previous low, uh, then we have some new information to to consider. You know, if we break this prior low, price likely begins to come back down towards the very bottom of that low area and most likely going to break it. If we break this pivot low, we're probably going to come significantly lower. Um, however, if we can hold this low, and when I say break this low, I mean a break and close below this area. But if we can hold it, and the demand begins to build and we start to get a push up that could result in some very nice upside follow through so that'll be something to uh, to watch as this week gets going uh, but again otherwise make sure to once again check our free webinar schedule make sure to check back for any updated videos as we always come out with these on Monday mornings but um, you know, if you guys see anything that you'd like me to discuss in another video, make sure to comment in the section below asking those questions. Also, make sure to follow the channel so that you can get updated on any new videos that come out. And uh, until next time, stay patient, stay disciplined, and I'll see you next time.